Welcome, ASAT Church family. Thank you for tuning in online with us either this morning or this afternoon. We are uh, so delighted to have you, uh, the pleasure of entering into your home and worshiping with you and sharing the word with you. Uh, today, I wanted to share one of my favorite uh, passages and scriptures. It's a common one uh, found in 1 Corinthians, uh, I believe it's chapter 2, verse 9. It says, I has not seen nor ear has heard. And it hasn't even entered into the heart of man, uh, that which God has prepared for them that love him. And what that verse says, it says, if you love the Lord, if you love and serve the Lord, it says that God has things in store and in plan for you that you haven't even begun to think about. Not in your wildest dreams, not in, not, it hasn't even crossed your mind the good things that God has in store and in plan for you. So in crazy times when uh, things and your plans don't seem to go the way that you had thought or planned, just rest assured in this promise that God is on the move in your situation. Just say that out loud. Say, God is on the move. Say it again. Say, God is on the move. Anytime a heart returns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know that God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, many mighty ways, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move, He's on the move today. Let's sing that again. Anytime the heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know. Time in weakness, someone falls upon their knees or dares to speak the truth that sets men free. Anytime the choice is made to stand upon the word, I know, I know, I know, I know that God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah, God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah, God is on the move, He's on the move today. I see a generation standing on the truth in each and every nation. God is on the move. I see a generation standing on the truth. In each and every nation, God is on the move. That God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move. He's on the move today. Sing it again. Sing God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move. He's on the move today. 
the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your
Will I lay my head I will see Of the goodness Of God Cause all my life You haven't been faithful And all my life You haven't been so So good With every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I have lived in the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so. surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me one more time your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life surrender now I give you everything is your goodness is running after is running after me in all my life you have been faithful in all my life you have been so so Thank you. 
Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to your seat at the table, at God's table. Everyone has a seat. I am so glad that you tuned in today. I hope you enjoyed worship. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for giving. Uh, we love you here at a seat at the table. And while you're tuning in, and you know what? Today, we're just going to get right into the Word. And, you know, lately, last couple of weeks, I, we've been looking at the book of Joshua. And so, you know, the first uh, two weeks ago, we looked at uh, Joshua and that Moses had died and that now Joshua is in charge or God has called him to lead the people into the promised land. And then last week, uh, you know, they got to the River Jordan and God, God told um, Joshua to get the priests and the, the moment that the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the presence of God, when, they, when their foot foot stepped into the river, the river would dry up and be stood at the, at the uh, ends like walls. And the Bible says that uh, the children of Israel walked on dry ground. And there is something that said uh, in those first few verses there in chapter three, last week we studied it, it says that uh, God told Joshua, it said, you have never gone this way before. And so we know that uh, in our life right now, with all the uh, COVID-19 and the lockdown, we have never gone this way before. And so today we're going to continue on and, and look at the life of Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter five. If we could pick up there, and I like for us uh, to read and starting uh, in verse one of the book of Joshua chapter five. Uh, look at it. It says, So it was that when all the kings of Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan, now the children of Israel had already crossed over, and all the kings of the Canaanites were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the river or the waters of Jordan from the four the children of Israel, until we had crossed over, that their heart melted, and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. And look at verse 2. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the son of Israel at the hill of the foreskin. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt, who were males, all men of war, had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. Verse 5, all the people who came out had been circumcised, but the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sown, sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons whom he had raised up in their place for they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. I want to talk to you on the subject of pain of change or the pain of change or in another way, uh, 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 no pain, no gain. You know, um, so I want to talk to you on that subject of the, the pain of change. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day, God, thanking you for your word. Uh, we ask that your word become revelatory to us today, that our, our minds, help our minds that we may understand, our hearts that we may receive, and our ears well, th that we may be able to hear what you're about to share with us. Help us to see things that we've never seen before. Lord, I ask that you would help me to present this message the way you shared it with me. Lord, that it would be easily understood and that it would encourage those people that are listening, your children. We thank you. Holy Spirit, come and be with us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, there's a whole lot of things that we're dealing with lately. You know, uh, today we're going to talk about the, uh, the pain of change. Last week we, we, we spoke about 
you know, uh, going after the ark of God that, you know, and the week before that, we talked about trusting God's uh, promise uh, and all these things. And, and here, I often wonder that um, why did uh, Joshua in 40 years in the wilderness, uh, God didn't command him to circumcise the men that were born in the wilderness. You know, remember they were walking around for 40 years and, and while the men that left Egypt were circumcised, but the men that were born in the wilderness never were circumcised. But yet right before, right when they walked over uh, on the other side of Jordan, right before they got to the city of Jericho, as they were walking into their promise, the Lord comes to uh, Joshua and says, you know what, I want you to begin to circumcise all the men that were born in the wilderness. You know, the, the circumcision, we first see this uh, when um, in the book of Genesis, that when God spoke to Abraham, he spoke to him and, and he said, I'm going to make you a father of nations. And, and God saw that uh, Abraham was a man of faith. And by his faith, then God sealed it with uh, telling him to circumcise himself and his sons. And so we see that that circumcision was a, a, a physical or an outward sign of an inner work, you know, to... Um, it, it represents that uh, it marked uh, the children of God, that uh, the men that were circumcised represented, you see it all through the Bible, even in the New Testament, the, the, the people of God, uh, uh, or especially the men, the, the men that belonged to the Jewish nation were circumcised. And this caused them to be known uh, as people of God. You know, uh, and as the children of uh, Israel was about to walk into uh, their promise, God does something. He says that, you know what, I'm going to make you men stand out uh, among those that are not of mine. Uh, that there is a, a sense of change in their life, in their physical body. Uh, there, there is a change. Now, it, it could be no one would know it but themselves, but God wanted them to know that there's going to be a permanent change. And sometimes change is painful. How many of you here have ever worked out? Huh? How many of you have ever tried to lift weights? And, 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 you know, when you're lifting weights, you know, I've been working out and it's been kind of tough lately, but I still try to do some exercise at home. But I remember every time I work out and I get a really good workout, it the next day I'm in pain. There is soreness around me and, and people would say, you know what? No pain, no gain. Or when we feel pain, sometimes uh, uh, there's, we know that there's a change that's happening. You know, when you were, remember when you were a teenager, you know, I have teenagers, uh, uh, kids, and there are times where they can feel pain in their joints, in their bodies, and, and we would call that growing pains. And, and those growing pains indicate that there is a, a change in their body. You know, oftentimes we don't want the pain. Uh, uh, oftentimes we don't want to change because we know that change causes us uh, uh, a little bit of pain. You know, that, that change uh, causes us to, to feel uncomfortable because pain is uncomfortable. Has anyone ever had a toothache? I've had and it's uncomfortable. Has anyone ever had joint aches? Yes, it's uncomfortable. I remember as a teen, I was growing very fast and I remember having a uh, pain in my joints, but I recognize that there are good pain and then there is bad pain. But no matter what, pain is a indicator. There is a change in our cells, in our body. But here, I want you to look at it as a spiritual thing. The children of Israel have been walking around 40 years. Uh, Joshua uh, came out of being a, a, a slave. Then he was the assistant to Moses. Moses died. God placed him over the children of Israel in Moses' place. And they've been walking around. They've been getting comfortable. But God says that your destiny is just on the other side of Jordan. As they cross the Jordan, they're looking at their promised land. And the Bible says that Joshua was told by God to circumcise circumcise the men uh, of Israel, that it represents that there has to be a change when we are children of God. 
You know, uh, how many times that uh, people would come and they don't change? How many times or when people go to church, but there's no change? Because change involves pain. Change involves pain in our flesh. So when the children of Israel were circumcised, they were, uh, there was some pain in our flesh. Did you know that, brothers and sisters, for us to be identified uh, as children of God, there is pain involved. You know, that pain that we see that Christ himself uh, had to pay that price while he was on the cross. That for, uh, for him to gain us as his children, there had to be pain that he had to be crucified and his blood had to be shed, that his side had to be pierced, his hands and his feet, that he had to wear a crown of thorns, that his body had to be whipped and beaten because there is pain involved in gaining something, but yet it was worth it to him so that he can gain us and give us a, 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 a grace to be called his children. Grace so that we can live eternity with him. Oh, brothers and sisters, there are a lot of times that we live our life and we say that we're Christians or this or that, but there is no change. You know, I, I see a lot of people that they go to church and, and they, they, they know the song, they clap their hands, but until there's a change, there is no identification of who they are or who they belong to. You know, that uh, uh, I remember when my, my wife was giving birth to my children, there was pain involved, but that pain allowed us to have a gain, which is our children. But that pain also is change. That change is what? That my, my wife had carried this baby. Now the baby's out and through that pain, her body is no longer have a big uh, womb uh, carrying a baby. There's change. Brothers and sisters, when we are going through, and I, I would say like this, in this lockdown, in this COVID-19 national or a global lockdown, I could say it like this. It's been about 40 days or more. For some of you, it might be even be more uh, that that uh, that we're coming out. And here we see the, the promise of God that God is doing. Maybe we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, that there's going to be some freedom. But I hope that you did not use this time and, and be the same. I hope that during this time that you uh, spent with God, that there is a change, that that your flesh was died. See, when they cut the foreskin, it represents they're cutting away their flesh and they were going to be separated for God. You know that you can, anybody can call themselves Christians, but how do you know that they're Christian? You know, uh, how do you know? It is because when you know someone, have you ever had a friend that you knew how they were, but when they became a believer in Christ, a true believer, you can see a change? There is a total change that there's no more just emotional things. There's no more just saying nice things and good words and singing the right songs, but their life has changed. Their, their life has changed. Their flesh is no longer desiring the things they used to desire. That their flesh is changed, their mind is changed, their heart is changed, the way they speak is changed. You can always tell when someone really have experienced salvation or experienced God because there's a change. You know, there's a story in the Bible about uh, Jacob. And there's a story about Jacob's ladder and, and he was wrestling with God. You know, and the Bible says that at the morning he wrestled with him, that when he was done, he actually had something on his hip. He, it created a, a, a change in his body that he actually, it created him to have a little limp because there was change. See, any time that you have experienced God one-on-one, -on -one, there is a change that happens to you. Now, am I saying that, oh, pastor, if I'm a male, am I saying that I need to uh, be circumcised physically? No, no, no. Uh, this is a, a physical uh, uh, example of a spiritual truth. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 6. It says this, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. You see that? 
that it says that the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. And if we look down to verse uh, uh, 8 and 9, it says, And you will again obey the voice of the Lord and do all of his commandments, which I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. You know what he's saying? He's saying that when you are obedient to the Lord, you know, you're asking me, say, Pastor, what are you talking about? What do you mean the pain of change? You know what the pain of change is? Is it's sometimes it's hard and it's painful to die to our own self. You know that? It's, it's painful. Uh, how, how many times that Jesus teaches us that we, we have to forgive those, uh, uh, we have to forgive uh, people. How, how many times have, uh, have Jesus said that to love those that hate you. How many times, you know, when Jesus taught, he said, if somebody hit you on one side, turn and uh, let them hit you on the other side. Uh, how many times did Jesus said, be good to those that, that uh, use you and abuse you? You know, that's painful, isn't it? You know, we want to be a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye. You know, has anybody ever here been ever hurt by someone? What is the one thing, and especially when you've been hurt, that you know you didn't do anything wrong? You want to just, ooh, you want to just come at them? But God says, you know, forgive them. You know, that's change. Brothers and sisters, when a man can change because he has encountered God, it is not about a physical change. It's not about what you and I do physically. You know, Christianity, true Christianity is not about works. It's about grace. But when you and I have a true encounter with God, there is a circumcision of the heart. You know that when we are walking in obedience with God, God begins to circumcise our heart. Did you know that circumcision represents change? Because once you are circumcised, you can never be the same. You can never be the same. You can never be the same again. That's why when you and I have a, a, a true experience with God, we, we are forever changed and it is the work of God. Look at what uh, Deuteronomy says again, and the Lord your God will. Who is doing it? It's not you and me. It's not because of our righteousness. The Bible says that uh, our righteousness is like filthy rags to God. No, it is him circumcising our heart so that we can love him with all of our heart. You know, I hope and pray that when you get out of this lockdown and there's freedom come back to our nation and the world, and I'm sure there's gonna be some normalcy, it's gonna take some time, but I hope that your old man, your old person that was in the wilderness, as you walk into the new day, that you walk into a new chapter, because the children of Israel, when they crossed over the Jordan, they were walking into a new chapter, a new destiny. Uh, uh, the promise of God is at hand. I hope that when you get out of this in these last months that you've been locked down, that you didn't, you didn't uh, uh, just feed your flesh. You didn't feed your bad nature. You didn't feed your bad thinking or what we call stinking thinking, but that you would say, God, circumcise my heart so I can love you that everything I do begin to prosper and that when I walk into this new day and and I really believe that God gave us an opportunity during this this crisis this this uh, pandemic that it was a reset he said I'm gonna reset it I'm gonna close everything down all the sports all the entertainment everything else I'm gonna shut everything down and we're gonna spend one-on-one -on -one with you Lord and I hope and pray that as you get out of this pandemic, as we go and our life is going to a little bit be normal, that you cut away your old man. You cut away your old sinful nature. You cut away your bad attitude and stinking thinking. There's some things that we all need to cut away. And that we don't carry it into the new day. And that say, God, I don't want to just talk about being a, a Christian. I want to be a Christian, be Christ-like, and that takes change. And nobody wants to change because there's pain involved. That takes dying to your 
our own selfishness. That takes dying to our own desires. That takes dying to our own will. And how strong is this flesh? How strong is this will? You know, um, I don't know if many of you, I'm sure all of you have fasted before. I've, I have fasted for days and weeks on end. And I remember, you know, for, uh, the body, there is so much pain. There's what we call hunger pain. And you feel this hunger pain. And you're thinking, why in the world am I doing this? But I want to tell you something is when you go through righteous pain of dying to your flesh and causing this, this, this flesh, this flesh, this will, our own will and our own desires to die. I promise you, you will gain so much more in God. The children of Israel would have not gone further if they wouldn't, weren't willing to be circumcised. Did you know that? They, that God would have just stopped it right then and there. But they were willing to change their life, change their physical body. It's this dying to their flesh, the cutting away and separating. It's painful. It's painful, but it was necessary. Just like Jesus being crucified, being beaten, being crucified and nailed to the cross, it's painful, but it was necessary because the pain, the pain of change is often necessary. I want to ask you today, where are you at with the Lord? Are, are there things in your heart that you're saying, Pastor, I, I don't want to carry this on. But I know that God helped. And you know what the great thing about it is? You and I don't have to do it. All we have to do is cry out to God to help us. And he will guide us. And he's the one that's going to circumcise our heart. Because once you have a circumcision in the heart, you are forever changed. It's no more just an emotional thing. It's no more just up and down. But now you are totally changed. And then God knows your heart. And when God knows your heart, he knows you belong to him. And you can walk in victory and power. Look at what the Apostle Paul says in the book of Galatians chapter 2. And 20. And this is the Apostle Paul. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Brothers and sisters, all we have to do is be obedient. You know, God's not asking us to be nailed to the cross. God's not asking us to beat ourselves or cut ourselves like the heathens do. All God is saying is, will you be obedient? And how is that? To love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. You see, it's, it's oftentimes where we say that, but when has anybody ever made you angry and you don't want to love him anymore? That's painful, isn't it? That God is saying, I want you to go and forgive them. I know they did you wrong, but forgive them. And you know, that's hard. Has anyone have ever been hurt? I have. It's hard to let go. It's painful to forgive when you've been wronged. You know what? It's painful to give up certain lifestyles that you've been used to. It's painful to try to live holy and righteous sometimes because our flesh thinks it's painful. But I promise you, when you live righteous before God, you have so much to gain. There's promise. You live a life full of joy. You live a life full of peace. You live a life full of of the inner love of God. You live this life that is magnificent and there are so many things that's exciting. For me, I wake up, I'm just excited. It's because I know that God, this is another day, it's gonna be awesome. I feel this great peace. And I know that if we can just be obedient to God, God will help us. I wanna encourage you to don't be afraid of the pain of change. Don't be afraid of there's things that you've got to lay down and it's painful. You know, there's sometimes you just got to walk away from certain people. Don't mean you don't love them, but you just can't be around them. And it's painful, isn't it? To walk away. But you know what? 
for you to be able to change, for you to be able to receive the promise of God that's coming. I really believe there's promise for his children. There's all through the Bible, the remnant of his people, that there is going to be a change that's coming to you. It's so good. I remember that there have been times where I didn't want to leave. I remember uh, leaving uh, my pastors, you know, and, and we left in good terms, my former pastors. And I was their spiritual son, and I, I loved them. I was like, I thought I'm going to be in their church. And, and just one day they said, son, we release you. We love you. We're not mad. We love you. And there was so much pain to, to leave, and, and they gave the church to another uh, uh, son. And, 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 and God says, I don't want you to take over this church. And there was so much pain in that. But what I realized is this, that God had a different plan for me. God had a different plan. And when I look back, I was able to travel the nations. I was able to preach to many, many people that I've never met. I've been to uh, 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 many nations, I think about 18 nations around the world. Now, that's not a lot to compare to other people, but that's a whole lot compared to some people I know. And I've been able to speak in different language. And I've been translated into French, into Spanish, into Portuguese. I've been translated into Quattro. You know, all these different languages and dialects. And you know what? Oftentimes, we don't want to change because we're afraid. But we don't want to change because there's pain involved. But I promise you that if you allow God to lead you, that pain of change, it will be worth it. And how do we get that? How do, what do we do? Look at what King David in the book of Psalms chapter 51, verse 10 and 12. This is how he prayed. When he was doing something that he ought not, he was praying because he had, he had messed up. Okay, he had messed up. He had taken another man's wife. He had taken another man's wife. And through it, uh, he sinned. And look at, and he said, I know I messed up. It was my flesh. But look what he says. It said, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Maybe that's you right now. Maybe uh, I'm not, I don't know what you're dealing with. Maybe there's some forgiveness you need to do. Maybe somebody hurt you and you can't get it right. But he said, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. You see, that's a prayer that all of us should be praying. So, Lord, creating me a clean heart, oh God. God, that you would renew the right spirit, the right attitude. You know that word, the right spirit within me is an attitude we have to have. What kind of spirit do we have carrying? What kind of attitude we have towards one another? You know, that he said, Lord, don't just, don't put me away from your spirit, your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me, but stay with me. Restore with me the joy. And there are a lot of times right now, we don't have a lot of joy. We're, we're stuck in the four walls. We, things are opening up, but there's a lot of, not a lot of joy. People are losing work and they're afraid. There's not a lot of joy. But I want to tell you right now that when we walk with the Lord, He will provide. Did you know that the moment that the children of Israel crossed the Jordan with Joshua leading them, did you know that they circumcised and the Bible says that they began to eat of the land that was the promised land and the manna that came every day stopped. Oh, brothers and sisters, God is about to give us the promise that is due to each and every one of us. Hold on to him. Run after his presence. Don't take the old man. Don't take your flesh. Don't take the bad habits. Don't take the, the, the stinking thinking. Don't take the, the wrong spirit with you when we are free from this pandemic. God gave us an opportunity to check our hearts. And all we have to do is say, God, I want to be obedient. God, I want to be the one to walk with you. And he will circumcise our hearts. He would do it. And when you have a circumcision of the heart, 
you will forever be marked that you are a child of Almighty God. I'm praying for you. And if you need prayer right now, just lift up your hands where you're watching. And we just pray a blessing over you. Heavenly Father, I pray for those that are watching and listening that made this word bless them. God, that no matter what they're dealing with, God, and that maybe they're trying to overcome something, that they're having a hard time. But God, all they have to do is cry out to you. For your word says, if we cry out to you, you hear us and answer us. And so God, I pray for them right now that you would bless them, bless their going and coming. God, help them in their weakness. God, help them to remove the flesh of their life so that they can walk mightily in you. God, that they can walk and that everything they touch will begin to prosper. God, as we break free, soon to be, that the world will function again Lord, I pray that as we walk towards you and we walk in your presence, that you would bless us and the work of our hand, that you would give us back the things that have been stolen. And God, that you would provide the joy of salvation to those that are needing it. And God, that the right attitude would be in their hearts. And God, that you would create in them a pure heart, create in each and every one of us a pure heart, oh God, and let your Holy Spirit forever be with us and your presence. I bless you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you and not be afraid of the pain to change. I love you. God loves you. We're praying for you. Let us know. Send us feedback. Text us. Email us and say, hey, pastor, I'm listening. We love you. We're praying for you. Please pray for me and my family as well in our church. You know, at our church, you always have a seat because at God's table, everyone has a seat. We love you. May God continue to watch over you. You know what? Visit our website. We have Bible study every Wednesday, women's Bible study on Thursdays. If you need prayer, just contact us. We love to talk with you. God bless you. Have a great, great week.